Welcome to this short Kriya AI tutorial. Kriya is simply my favorite AI image creation tool. It is super fast, it comes with a lot of tools and features that are already available in the free version. It creates amazing results and most importantly, it gives you a lot of control while doing so. In this video, I'm gonna teach you everything you need to know to get started. But before we begin, I have a very special gift for you. I reached out to the founder and he replied with a promo code that you can use to purchase any current Kriya subscription with a 20% discount. Yes, you heard me right, 20% off all subscriptions. Use the promo code 3D Gladiator on the Stripe page during checkout. The code is valid until the end of January. Now, most of what I'm going to show you in this tutorial can be already uh, achieved in the free version. And now let's get started. So this is what the Kriya dashboard looks like when you go to Kriya.ai and create an account. We have a quick access to the image generator tool, to the edit tool, to the video generator, to the real time AI uh, generator and the enhancer. So everything here can be also found in the menu at the top. Let me start with the image generation tool. And this is something that uh, many of you are probably already familiar with as it lets you create a bunch of images by um, providing a prompt. You can select an aspect ratio down here. You can start with one of your images or apply a specific style. So this is something I'm gonna show you in a minute. And then you can choose between different computation models. On the free tier, only the, the fast flux model is available that creates four images. After the image creation based on your prompt, so in this case, snow covered rocks with a mysterious ice castle in the background and a glowing red laser beam shooting in the sky, dark mood, you can create different variations of a specific image. You can turn a still image into a short video. So that's something I'm gonna show you uh, later on as well. And you can uh, download these images. Now the real magic happens in the real time AI image generator. So this is what I'm gonna show you next. So let me show you around here real quick. We have an HTML canvas on the left uh, with a tool palette. This HTML canvas is able to display 2D images as well as 3D models. On the right is the AI preview window. For some reason, it always starts with military vehicles on my end, even if the text prompt down here is empty. Above it, there is the AI strength slider. So this is gonna become important uh, later on. We can toggle between different aspect ratios. You can select uh, uh, other computation models. You can apply a quick enhance on the AI preview window. You can save the image. In this case, it is stored on the assets page and you can send it straight to the upscaler. And on the right, there are different styles that you can apply when creating images. Now the image generation already kicks in by just changing the background color of the canvas like so. By doing so, it updates uh, the uh, AI image preview on the right. And as you noticed, uh, this all happens blazing fast and even without specifying a prompt. So by clicking on the variation button down here, it creates different uh, tank vehicles. Let's specify the prompt a little bit more by typing in something like uh, a pink tank. And then by clicking on the variation button uh, a few more times, you can easily toggle through different variations until you find something that looks like what you had in mind in the first place. Now let's continue with a slightly more sophisticated prompt, something like um, uh, this one here, an extremely detailed image of a golden scarab with emerald engravings and little diamonds, top view. Let's create a few variations and also change uh, the background color to something slightly lighter. As you can see, it already creates beautiful variations just with this short prompt. And then we can move on to use the canvas to guide this image creation. So let me create um, a circular shape first. Color is fine. And as you can already see, it tries to take into account the shape and the color of the circle. So let's create another one. And this time I'm gonna change the color to something reddish or, or pink. And to make sure that these colors um, and shapes on the canvas are considered during the image creation, we need to tweak the AI strength. So the lower the strength, 
the more it looks like what we have on the canvas. And in this case, we lose uh, a lot of or almost all of the details. So I try to find a sweet spot somewhere around here and uh, move these shapes around a little bit. We can also change the, the background color again and uh, create different variations. This one looks already very nice. This one here looks nice as well. And when you are happy with the results, you can simply save uh, the image. And again, it is stored on the asset page. Before we move on and edit the image with the edit tool, let me show you what the quick enhance does here. So by clicking on it, it uh, improves the quality of the image in the preview window. So it's counting down to zero. And then we have a, an image that already looks a lot more detailed and a lot more crisp. And another cool thing I would like to show you is uh, what happens when I take a screenshot. So I use the Windows snipping tool like so. Then I get rid of these shapes on the canvas, paste the image. So it starts uploading the image. Usually it takes a second. Okay, there we have it. Mm, let me scale it up quite a bit, like so. Right click on the image, remove the background. This again takes a few seconds. And then I can right click on the image again and convert it into a 3D model. So this feature became available only a few days ago. And it basically tries to recreate uh, a 3D mesh with textures applied based on the 2D image. As you can see here, it's converting it into a 3D model, which also happens pretty fast. So let's give it another few seconds. And it, it did a pretty good job actually. So it's not just projecting a 2D image onto something. It really tries to create a sophisticated and detailed 3D model. And in case the AI preview window on the right is not updating anymore, then just refresh your browser, uh, scale the model, and place it on the canvas again and start rotating. And by playing around uh, with the AI strength slider, I can make sure that the AI preview on the right looks a little bit more like my 3D model on the left. So the option to turn pretty much any two dimensional object into a 3D model gives you a lot of additional control to create the exact image that you have in mind. Now, before we move on to the edit tool and the image enhancer, I want to show you another very exciting feature. So again, I'm here uh, in the real time editor and down here in the bottom left corner, I can switch from compose to screen. So then this little pop up appears uh, where I can select uh, the window of another application that's running in the background. In my case, it's the good old ZBrush. And by doing so, I can share the ZBrush interface with Krea. And down here, I can select the, the portion or the section of ZBrush I want to share. So in this case, it's the 3D model in the center. And then let's lower the AI strength quite a bit and also provide a prompt, something like female astronaut with helmet. And then let's start rotating the model and the magic begins. So it turns this basic clay head into a complex model in the AI preview window. So let me decrease the AI strength even more. And let's see what happens when we apply a different material. Um, I don't know, let's go for the normal map, uh, RGB material. And uh, this turns the low res head into a crazy looking AI generated model and again all of this happens pretty much instantly to be honest this feature is so cool i could play with it all day long and now let's select a different material and also um, change the prompt to something crazier like deep sea creature <laughs> and uh, maybe crank up the ai strength a little bit and by just turning the model, I get all of these creepy creatures. So this one looks nice. Uh, let's save it for later. The asset page shows you a list of all of your creations. 
and you can send them straight to the upscaler or the edit tool. Let's try edit first. So this also takes a second or two to upload the image and then we can already start changing some regions. And I do this by providing a very simple prompt and then I hit generate. And this looks already pretty cool. If you are not satisfied with the results, just hit the redo generation in the right hand lower corner again. <laughs> Let's try one more. And maybe another one. And then you can go back to the asset page and all of your creations are listed here. So I don't like this one. So go ahead and delete it like so. Let's return to the real-time generator one more time, real quick. Uh, the prompt is uh, still the same prompt as before. I'm now in the Compose setup instead of the screen setup. So I stopped recording the ZBrush screen. Uh, let me make the background lighter just a tad, like so. And then on the far right of the screen, there are these styles. You can browse the style uh, gallery here. So in this gallery, you will find uh, styles provided by Kriya and Kriya users. So let's try maybe this one first and it immediately applies the style. You can uh, control the strength of the style down here by moving this slider up and down. And let's also create some variations. So this one looks really cool. By decreasing the effect, we limit the amount of style applied to the image and even at its lowest level, the style is applied to the image. And we can of course also crank it up real high to get something like this. You can delete it down here. Let's select another one, maybe uh, this one, a monochromatic look. And as you can see, it creates these really interesting and intriguing images. Now, if you are looking for more realistic results, especially when you try to create AI generated people, then it makes sense to switch to the flux computation model. And then I've prepared a prompt. So an extremely realistic portrait of a young woman in her twenties, business look, office environment. So let's create a few variations. So this one uh, looks interesting. I'm gonna save it. And then uh, let's create one more, this time with a neutral background. And this one looks nice too. So let's also save it. And then let's go to the asset page. And I'm going to send this one straight to the upscaler. So make sure that the image is selected on the left and on the right. We have the upscaling settings. I'm gonna double the resolution and then I continue with the default values. And after clicking the enhance button, it takes a few seconds for Kriya to reinterpret the image and create the high res version. So by moving this horizontal slider back and forth, you can see the new image looks a lot more real. So the hair um, is a lot crisper, a lot nicer. Um, the skin is more detailed as well as the eyes, the teeth, the mount, and so on and so forth. So let's go back to the asset folder. Here we have a before and an after image. And now let's continue with this one here. And instead of upscaling, I'm going to send it to the edit tool. And here we do not uh, use any of these options down here, but we just make the image wider quite a bit and then click on generate. So this works a little bit like the generative fill tool in Photoshop. And it should extend the office environment in the background. You can see how it generates the new image and the result looks pretty nice. So when we go back to the asset folder, we have now the subject with extended background that we can send to the upscaler and here I keep the default settings. So you could basically uh, crank up the strength. So this defines how much of the image is reinterpreted when Kriya uh, creates the high res version. You can play around with the resemblance. And maybe for this one, I'm gonna um, enable match color. And then let's see what the result looks like. There we go. Let's check the difference. It looks a lot nicer. So not that much has changed in the background because it was already quite blurry, but it kept this blur and was enhancing the details of the subject. 
and uh, I would say it did a pretty good job. Also, the resolution is quite high and we can uh, take it to Photoshop and um, enhance it even further. The last tool I want to show you is the video generator. So I went to the image generator first and created this simple set of images. Keep in mind that the video generator is only available if you have a paid subscription. I used a simple prompt to create these images. I like this one the most. And let's see if we can turn it into a short video sequence. I'm gonna send it over to the video generator. Uh, I used the same prompt as before, but we switch from the Luma model to the runway model that allows us to use the AI generated image as a start frame and then I just hit generate. While it is processing the image, I'm gonna pause the video for a second and then show you the final result. Now it took around 30 seconds to create this sequence. As you can see, the camera is moving into the scene, approaching the temple. Uh, maybe this is not too spectacular, also because of my very simple prompt, but still the result looks quite impressive. I created another one. Um, this one is a little bit more interesting. There's a spaceship crashing into the, the surface of a planet. And let me show you the video I've created. This time um, I was using uh, the Kling 1.0 Pro. It actually took around 10 minutes to, to generate and I've provided only the start frame here. So the result is quite nice and you can even add sound. So let's try this. It gets the impact quite nice. That's also a very neat little feature. Now, there will be a lot more to talk about, but I hope that the short demonstration in today's video uh, was helpful. And I also hope that you can use some of the tips and tricks for your own projects. Now, we haven't talked about the animator yet. We haven't talked about the option to train your own styles. So if you are interested in a demonstration of these tools, let me know in the comment section. Last but not least, let's also take a look at the pricing. It's quite affordable. The cheapest tier can be purchased for $10 a month. It comes with 700 flux images, many thousands real-time images, 180 enhanced images, and even three training jobs. So that's the plan I am currently using. All right, that's it for today's video. Thank you very much for tuning in. Thanks for watching. Thanks for engaging in the comment section, and I hope to see you in the next one.